Well, all right. So the second idea was a little bit more serious. Uh, so you can see um, what you think of this. So the, so the idea was that um, maybe uh, we could try to uh, create uh, 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 an AI that sort of has the same relationship to us that uh, we do to our genes, right? So you know, our genes, in some sense, are very, very stupid things compared to us, right? And yet, you know, uh, as we know from experience, they can you know, despite their relative stupidity, can exert an enormous uh, 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 amount of influence over uh, over us. You know, even if we understand exactly what's going on, even if we uh, sort of regard, you know, our... I, I have to say that I regard the, the case of genes as sort of a paradigm case of loss of control, where the we have no explicit drive either to maximize our inclusive reproductive fitness mm -hmm. or to protect the and, and make copies of the DNA composing us. Mm -hmm. And um, trans, transhumanists like myself, which is to say people who have been properly exposed to their likely options, mm -hmm. tend to see no qualms whatsoever relative to our values on changing substrate um, in such fashion that we leave our DNA and our carbon-based metabolism is completely behind mm -hmm. as long as we remain the same sort of people with the same emotions and the same values. We would, not, we would say that nothing of much significance had happened mm -hmm. in that change of substrate, except insofar as, it preserves, except insofar as it improves our quality of life in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, so from a so, from so genes are stupid. Yes. They have no foresight. Right. They don't plan for things that are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Gene frequencies merely change in reaction to things that have previously happened. Mm -hmm. And I would regard the construction of human brains by the genes mm -hmm. as a paradigmatic example of how not to do friendly AI. I see. Okay, well, so just in, in this particular context, you know, the idea was that you could imagine uh, an AI that, that might be able to, to reason itself, uh, 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 you know, out of uh, the idea that it should, uh, uh, you know, have, uh, uh, that it should bother at all with humans. It might see that as a complete waste of its time, and yet still, you know, it just feels these urges to help humans. It just, just oh, you know, it just, it, just, it just feels so good for it to help humans that it just can't help itself. So uh, I, I think mm -hmm. I, I think you're you're sort of presuming that these minds are coming off a factory assembly line you don't control with all sorts of values that you can't influence but can sort of appeal to and you know try to persuade it as if you were talking to the, some human from the tribe who lives across the water where you didn't build them and they come with all sorts of desires built in and you have to persuade them rather than you know, actually designing them from scratch. Well, I'm not trying to uh, to make any presumption about what their desires are. I'm saying, you know, they may uh, they may have desires that, that you know, we can't even conceive of or understand. So I'm not trying to make a presumption about that. But I'm saying, you know, the, the question is, can we design something which is much more intelligent than us, but that nevertheless, uh, you know, no, no matter what uh, uh, other desires it has, you know, just feels... Uh, 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 constantly sort of impelled or steered in, in the direction of some particular desire. Just like uh, with humans, we find that no matter how intelligent they are, uh, you know, they just seem just pushed constantly sort of upstream in the direction of certain things like wanting food and sex, right? And in fact, intelligence seems to have, have very little or no relation to it. Um, okay, so this is start sounding, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to even. There's a there's a lovely little uh, parable mm -hmm. that I once heard. Okay, sure. At a science fiction convention, from someone who'd been around in the old days, and he told me about a science fiction TV show he watched back in the days when science fiction TV shows were a lot less sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And there were these people flying around in a spaceship, and you know, fighting aliens. Okay. And the. All, when the heroes flew through an asteroid belt, they always had to dodge the asteroids, which tumbled through space which, with a huge grinding noise. Um, and, and of course, space was entirely full of asteroids, you know, mm -hmm. packed densely full of it. Mm -hmm. And the uh, aliens, though, had this uh, mysterious ability to dematerialize and fly right through the asteroids. Mm -hmm. So one time they discovered a derelict alien ship, mm -hmm. boarded it, mm -hmm. 
found the control room, and, and the captain of the hero ship uh, looks at a lever and says, aha, this must be the lever that controls the dematerializer. So he pries up the lever, takes it back to his own ship, and now they can dematerialize and fly through asteroids. And I call this the detached lever fallacy. Yes. And the problem is that um, human, it, the problem is whenever you try to, um, when, when people anthropomorphize AIs and they try to pull levers mm -hmm. without thinking about whether or not you still have the machinery behind them. Mm -hmm. So um, if you say something along the lines of, well, we'll appeal to the AI's sense of duty, then you're assuming that the AI already has a sense of duty and, you're, and you just need to pull the lever on it mm -hmm. somehow. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not presu but I'm not presupposing how this would happen. I'm just asking the question of, of uh, how we can make it happen, since that seems like something we might want to do. Well, if you can add one value and have it stable, mm -hmm. then why are you assuming that there's these other values coming into it from nowhere, that you can't control its other values? Well, bec I, I mean, because if, if we look at the analogy of humans, then we find that, that that's the case, right? I mean, humans have all sorts of desires that have nothing to do with uh, sort of what our, what our genes want for us, if it makes Name sense one. to talk about them wanting. Well, I mean, you know, the, uh, 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 the, the desire, you know, to, uh, to, do, to do higher math. Um, a friend of mine, Marcello Harrishoff, mm -hmm. um, once compared math to ice cream. So ice cream has more sugar, yes. salt, and fat in it than anything in the ancestral environment. Yes. It's a super stimulus. Yes. In the same way, we evolved to do abstract thinking and mm -hmm. even to enjoy certain kinds of abstract thinking. Yes. And for people who are sufficiently good at abstract thinking, mm -hmm. we invented a kind of abstract thinking ice cream, mm -hmm. which is more yes. beautiful than, yes. and elegant than any sort of abstract thinking you'd find in the ancestral environment. Yes. And that was what we call math. Yes, no, I, I mean, I, 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 I agree with your causal story. I mean, we, we you know, people who we do this, we basically are just gluttons for ice cream. Or, 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 and some of us are gluttons for, for mathematical elegance. Mm -hmm. But it's the same. But, but in each case, even though you're doing something that has no analogy in the ancestral environment, mm -hmm. your values are growing out of the emotions and other moral circuitry that were built by your genes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're not happening sui generis, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Right. Right. So, uh, okay. So, I mean, we know the causal story in this case. You know, if we're creating AI, we're going to have to uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, ma then make up make our own causal story. But yeah, yeah. So. Uh, you know, it's not in loco parentis because parents don't get to choose their kid's source code. Right. They, they get to pull the levers. Right. They don't get to build the machinery. Right. So, so what we're looking at here is actually reaching into mind design space, mm -hmm. pinpointing a possibility and pulling it out. Well, that's what you do if you're doing friendly AI. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you're just sort of hacking something together because you think it's going to be cool. Mm -hmm. Okay.